Okay, we're back. All right, Congressman, how do you propose to deal with the White House's refusal to let its aides testify before Congress? Oh, yeah, that's the latest obstruction. Well, we're going to have to force the issue. We're going to have to litigate it in court. Uh, and we're going to have to look at other options as well. And that may mean devices we've used in the past where we cut off funding for certain offices within certain agencies if they don't cooperate. Uh, so we'll look at whatever tools that we have. Um, because at the end of the day, if this president can succeed in stonewalling the Congress, uh, it means that our power of oversight is effectively nullified. And that will obviously have serious repercussions when you have someone who lacks character in the Oval Office, but it will also have repercussions for any president who follows. Uh, and so there's a lot at stake in this fight. It's not just over whether a certain witness testifies, it's over whether we have a system of checks and balances that still works. Okay. Um, Grover, by the way, you go on Fox News. Grover just told me he went uh, up at the Comedy Store last night. Yeah. The Comedy Store. <laughs> that takes balls, because that's not a, not a conservative audience. Did you do stand-up? Yeah. yeah. Did, yeah. They, did they laugh? Yeah. We did, we did well. You, you, you count really? how many, you count how many yeah. judges. Who's we? Hmm? Who's the sock we? puppet. The, the, the club. <laughs> no. We had, it was a, uh, we had about 12 people performing. Um, it was oh. good. It was a... Conservative slate, you're saying? No, 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 no. Everybody else was talking about sex. I tried to, <laughs> I tried to do some just regular. I didn't go blue. Everybody else went. Everyone else went deep blue. <laughs> You'd have been happy. <laughs> was it mostly about taxes? Or? No, it wasn't no. about taxes at all. Oh. Yeah, I was like, what do you mean jokes about? It was I'm comedy. So oh, okay. There's no jokes about taxes. Per okay. Se. Oh. <laughs> we were making fun of the French. With a pup making fun of the French. Well, we can all get in on that. That's sure. a piece of it. Uh, do you think Stephen Moore, also a frequent guest on our show, yeah. uh, should be on the Fed board? Now, Stephen is an economist like Dr. Pepper's a doctor, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, think, uh, I think Steve should, and I he think should. he will be on the, uh, well, on the Fed board. Uh, he'll really? Have this, uh, besides yeah. the fact that he agrees, he's totally on your page with taxes. He's the, yeah. you know. He's, he's fine your... on taxes, but he's also, look, he's also for commodity backed currency. But does he know the how this is a central, a country's central bank is sort of key yeah, to keeping our shit together and not having the, what is it, unfucked? Yeah. 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 Unfuck America. Unfuck yeah. America. Yeah. I no, feel when, this when, is when a good way. When you undermine the institutions that are supposed to keep a, a president accountable, the independent institutions, law enforcement, the Fed, balance of powers, journalists, Trump goes after these intentionally and constantly, and, and, and the appointment of Moore is just an effort to do that. He put a crony on the board of the Fed. It's, it's his old play. It's so many stooges. Come on, this uh, is a look, stooge. You, you may disagree with, with Moore's policy of sort of no, let's harder... Talk, I don't know let's just talk about qualifications. Mm -hmm. You really think he has the qualifications? Yeah. Look, look, he's a serious guy. He's a serious student of economics. The tax plan that he, he put is? together okay. turned the economy from one that wasn't growing very rapidly to growing at 3%. This light, today... We just found out the last quarter the economy grew at 3.2 percent. Good year. GDP. This is Good, rather yeah. significant Great first quarter growth. number. But that has no, nothing yes. to do with whether Steve Moore should be on the Fed, right. which is something that he <laughs> he has attacked constantly but, throughout his career. Steve, also, Steve this, helped write the tax bill that did that, which is more than other people have done. This has nothing to do with whether or not the qualifications for sitting on the Fed. However, it might be relevant that he made several comments over the years, right. ridiculously misogynistic, right. sexist comments. Yeah. Shouldn't be female sportscasters unless they look like so and so, or unless they dress like so. Mm -hmm. These. You these took it positions. personally. Yeah, I did. As a matter of fact. <laughs> these would have been retrograde okay. positions in no, Kate Smith's time, right. let, alone, <laughs> let alone more recently. <laughs> Brought it all back like that. But he also, yeah. he also yeah. said that women shouldn't be at men's basketball games right. because it's so annoying to see women. Isn't there a place okay. that men can go this and This has nothing to do with women. interest rates. No, right. it, okay, right. but I don't think he so should So is there anything the you can do about this, Stephen Moore, on the, court, on the uh, Fed bench? Uh, well, uh, you know, I, I share the, the view he doesn't belong there. Uh, he's not qualified to be there. But you can't and, stop and, it. And if you're going to cite the tax uh, giveaway bill as a, as a credential, that's all the more reason not to uh, uh, have him in that position. Um. <clears throat> okay. Bob Costas, what's your reaction to the right wing's embrace of Putin, considering you were criticized by people like Rush Limbaugh for being too favorable towards him in 2014? I remember that. Well, <laughs> let's, let's, let's start out right. with the false premise to begin with. Right. What I said about Putin, among many things said about Putin in the course of hosting the Olympics from Sochi, was that Forbes, not Mother Jones or the nation, Forbes had named him for 2013 the most influential world leader, dropping Obama to two. 
Now, naturally, wow. the right-wing crowd took that out of context. I became a straw man. That became a talking point. They ignored the fact that Prior to that and after it, I noted he has the mentality of the former KGB agent that he was, that he's an international thug, that journalists and dissidents are suppressed or worse uh, in, in, in Russia. They have anti-gay laws. They sponsor repressive regimes like Syria. It didn't make any difference that I said all those things because that wasn't useful to their business model. However, you look at the way Trump has cozied up to Putin and all those curious moments where he could have made clear that he was an American first and did not, okay? But to that crowd, it's all a matter of, you know, that's, that's, their, that's their tribe. And they cheat at the Olympics. Oh, they absolutely cheated at the Olympics. They cheated right under the IOC's nose yes. at, at the Sochi Olympics. There should be no Russian meddling. Meddling, get it? <laughs> I get it. That's good. That's good. <laughs> okay. Ouch. Uh, uh, John Avalon, do you have any thoughts on why Bill Barr would jeopardize his legacy to appease Trump? <laughs> um, look, it, it is crystal clear that he misled the American people intentionally by putting forward the most positive spin possible on the report um, and, and, and closing the door on obstruction, or, you know, at least unless Congress picks it up. I think, I think because th there's an Overton window with Trump, right? He didn't nominate Chris Kobach for AG, so all of a sudden Bill Barr is comparatively respected. If you look at his record in the George H.W. Bush administration, this is a play he's done before. He's done these, these memos that sort of summarize, he says, what an underlying opinion says, and then after it's subpoenaed two, three years later, you find out actually it's a very different different deal. Um, he's clearly making good on his 19-page memo that he wrote for the president about, about Mueller. Uh, I don't... I think he will go down in history. This will be a real mark not only against him and the administration, but th this was a total distortion, an attempt to frame the debate in a way that's favorable to the president, and it did not represent the contents of the Mueller report. You may not be unhappy they didn't go far enough, but there's a lot there. There are 12 open cases, um, and, and I think there's a lot more investigations that you're going to be done in the House about follow the money and other things. I don't care. It felt good to rip Mueller a new asshole. There you go. The, the, the other thing that, that is so um, galling about Barr is, of course, Mueller wrote his own summary. Mm -hmm. Uh, if he wanted to right. give a preview and not wait until the whole report was out, part of the Mueller plan. had a summary, but the, the whole communication strategy was get Barr out there to misrepresent the report. Why did Barr want the job? Um, I marvel at this with so many people um, who are willing to completely debase themselves for a seat at Donald Trump's table. And, yeah. Um, you know, I, I'll, a guy who's so uh, disloyal to others. When, uh, right. when Rudy right. Giuliani first went on the talk show circuit yeah. as uh, a, a surrogate of Trump. Uh, I wrote a tweet, um, and unlike the president, I have my staff review it to see if it's insane. Um, <laughs> and my draft, <laughs> my draft said, you know, whatever happened to America's mayor, why are so many people right. willing to completely debase themselves for a seat at Donald Trump's table? And two of my staff said, you can't possibly send that out. You can't possibly send that out. They were both New Yorkers, and I said, why? And they said, because he completely debased himself long before right. now. Yeah. Um, no, and, no. and they were I right. I used to work for Rudy Giuliani when he was mayor, and I was proud to do it. And, and, but, but I do think this is a, a different chapter. I do think folks have a tendency to show a lot of loyalty and fealty to somebody who, which, who does not show loyalty in it's return. Uh, and, and just, you know, back on, on, on the bar thing, the most egregious thing was he repeated six times in the presser of the day and in the memo the, the exonerating, you know, the, the non-exonerating language, right? The other half of the sentence said that the Trump campaign expected right. to benefit right. from Russian efforts to influence the election. Yep. That's as crystal clear as it gets. That effort's ongoing today, and Donald Trump is still in denial. Yeah. It's okay. completely insane. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, audience. We'll see you next week.